Well, day one of the parliamentary inquiry into the best day escape has uh, concluded, and uh, we're now joined by a member of the Portfolio Committee on uh, Justice and Correctional uh, Development, Jolie Swa Yako. A very good evening to you, and thank you so very much for joining us here on uh, SABC News, ma'am. Thank you so much, Flo. Thank oh, you. You're most welcome. Let's, let's start here. I mean, let's reflect then on what took place uh, today and, and your thoughts on this presentation by uh, G4S. I heard there, you know, in that clip that we played, you, you actually said uh, we need to, uh, we need strict recommendations after all of this is done. What did you mean by that? And, and, and just really reflecting on today, what were your thoughts? Um, firstly, um, mm, our thoughts are that uh, we should never have outsourced uh, the primary role of the function of correctional services mm. to an outside company for that many years. Um, secondly, you could see from the conduct that G4S was mainly coming to the portfolio committee to tick a box, um, to say, no, we, you've been summoned, you've summoned us, um, we're here now, um, we're just going to appear, and we will not give you any definite answers on to what happened and how gross uh, the crime was. Uh, from the moment Tower Besta requested to be taken to a special uh, cell because of his protection. Uh, and secondly, um, from the time then a body was found in his cell. There was a lot that happened uh, at G4S at that time. Mm. And who knows what else has happened at that correctional center um, at this moment. And it, it begs to, to, to ask that, um, why have we then not held them accountable and why have they come to us as parliament to report basically nothing because they were that's what they did they did they came to us and they said nothing you, you say that it seems as though the representatives of gfo always was sort of uh you know only appearing just to to sort of tick a box is there a sense that they are uh, they have a bad attitude towards uh, this whole uh, process i mean if you look back on the fact that the first time they were supposed to um in fact be there uh, before you they said oh they didn't know but you know ironically then the lawyers knew about it and the lawyers uh, happened to to be there is it a contemptuous way in which you know they're approaching this 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 whole matter or, or just are they just not serious about it? What, 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 do you, what sense do you get out of them? Well, with G4S, when we went on oversight last year on the 23rd of April, um, there were a few concerns that we see from the public because they knew, because we have publicized that we're going to go on an oversight at G4S in the Mangong uh, Correctional Center. Mm. And they posed a couple of questions because there were things that were going on there. Yeah. And when we asked them those questions, they were very arrogant in how they answered our questions. And, they, you know, at this center is very well run. Mm. Everything is easy. Everything is clean. And obviously, when you come to someone's house and they're prepared for you, they will prepare, they will show you what they want you to see. Yeah. Um, and I think the attitude that they had with regards to this inquiry was the same in that they uh, basically um, came to us to report they they were just there as entities not really to account for anything um they didn't take matter seriously they thought that they could just whitewash everything um and i think it, it shows to the extent of how this company has viewed um their role um as long as they make money out of it you do, i mean it, it, even how much they've charged the state yeah for the running of the facility um shocking but it's it's actually insane how they have not taken us seriously as parliament and remember that parliament is not just a representative of us as individuals but as a country you know um they have not come and spoken to us and said this is exactly what happened this is how we take accountability for what happened yeah this is our role these are the faults that we made and this is uh, the fall that we're willing to take because we've contravened a number of things and uh, according to the contract that they have with this is there's a lot of issues that they have um contravened yeah. uh, as, as a company that is contracted by DCS to come and do the function. And, and Clearly nothing was done. Let's talk then about uh, the consequences. I heard one uh, member of the portfolio uh, committee saying that, you know, your stories are contradicting each other, first of all. To me, it comes across as pure lies, is what she said. And she furthermore went to say, listen, there are actually consequences for lying to us. And perhaps maybe we need to uh, paint a picture for the public about, you know, what sort of consequences are we talking about uh, here? Because, you know, we're hearing things like, you know, cancelling the contract with G4S for, for on the, on the side of the state, but surely it can't end there. And there's also the issue of, it seems as though they're scapegoating only uh, three uh, officials in this whole um, escape. So let's talk about what that, what you're looking at. I suppose it's early stages, but 
in the long run, what consequences we're actually looking at, because this is a serious matter. Um, there's a number of things that we must look at um, as a committee. Um, firstly, um, we have to have accountability from G4S. Secondly, um, there has to be a paper trail as to what happened. Um, and thirdly, um, G4S has to come to the party and say, this is what we did wrong. Um, another thing is that DCS, uh, Constitution Services, should never have, have had a contract and outsourced this power for 20 years because this contract only expires in 2026. Yeah. Uh, which means that they would have been comfortable with outsourcing the function of correctional services to this company for that many years. Mm -hmm. Whereas that, that resource could be insourced by the state for it to hold itself accountable. We would be dealing with the state right now because it would mean that we've got gaps in the state. However, we outsource that, that function to an outside company because we could not handle that. Yeah. And we put that company at a pedestal where we made them feel as if they were a high-functioning company mm -hmm. who could come to Parliament and lie to us, who could delay processes of, of Parliament, because they obviously know that they are in charge. Yeah. Um, they've had us for 20 years. So what could stop them from doing that? Yeah. So Ad Advocate, um, Advocate, Advocate Breitenbach made a point. Mm -hmm. uh, Ad Advocate Breitenbach made a point. And, and, you know, while you're talking about the issue of costs and so forth, um, you know, she said that there needs to be some sort of a, a lifestyle audit, which, you know, G4S or asked about a lifestyle audit. And G4S responded by saying that they didn't feel uh, that's necessary. Is this something, you know, as a committee, you think that you might be actually uh, pushing for? Because that might actually indicate... Uh, um, the the depth of of, of the situation um, uh, with regards to G four S. I think this country is not ready for the depth of how deep this goes um, in terms of how high it goes because there's no way that you could um, sneak in a body, um, sneak in an accelerant. Mm -hmm. um, you could have somebody who functions and works at high level, uh, whereas they host um, sessions with people who are invited. Um, and they're saying happy birthday to him over a laptop that's not even allowed to be in his cell. Um, there's a lot that's happened that needs investigating. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot that happened that uh, is going to expose just how deep this uh, this entire event happened. And for, for us as parliament, it's scary because it means that uh, we cannot rely on uh, any department to, to hold itself accountable. We cannot rely on uh, uh, on anyone that we asked to come to us yeah. to report facts because also dcs when they came to i mean sorry g4s when they came to us they have not told us any concrete line of events a timeline that makes sense they've not showed us any evidence of what happened yeah. they've not said anything that makes sense to us there's no accountability from them and i feel there's no need for them to have accountability because they know um who they have uh, behind them, uh, you know, as, as yeah. G4A. All right, uh, Yulisa, many thanks uh, to you. Thank you for giving us uh, that uh, update uh, there uh, of what uh, transpired, of course, at uh, the, um, the Portfolio Committee meeting, of course, which they had with the G4S, uh, where they had G4S had a presentation.